pot in. Well, you can still do that as a Christian, uh, believing that you're doing well, but still avoiding your true calling. So I'm going to talk about this tonight, and we'll see. Um, man, it's early, huh? You guys like go home early. Okay, we'll try our best. All right, in your notes here, you know, you got Deuteronomy 10, 12. We're going to go through these, but bear with me. Okay, it's killing time to Marcy made her way up here. Oh, yeah. Go live. Okay. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now I got to start all over. Good night. Okay. I don't know. We're trying to figure out why this thing is dim. Uh, I think it's the bulb. Brand new, though. Okay. Let's slide up. Let's read this thing. All right. Let's start already. And uh, thank you to the worship team. You guys in a pinch. You guys do all right, man. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, man. At least had some melody tonight. It was real good. All right. Okay, sometimes it sounds like uh, the cokey frogs fighting each other up here. You got to be prepared for everything, right? <laughs> Even if I come up here, I got to be prepared to say something. Um, I was just telling somebody today that, you know, they were asking, oh, you know, about the stories and all the examples. You know, these things just come to me as I'm talking, yeah? and most of it is uh, because of your life. So, oh, this bugger did, man. How come? I don't can read that one. Now I got to go more close. Okay. So when you talk about serving or swerving, um, well, let me ask you this. You know, a lot of these messages are unraveling like secrets. Yeah, A lot of it are secrets. If you want to be blessed and prosperous, well, let me ask you first. How I many of you want to be blessed and prosperous? You got to raise your hand and say, yeah, me. Because anytime you raise your hand, you are actually acknowledging that the Lord is there. You're not high-fiving nobody. Yeah, actually, in the spirit, pulling down a mantle. A mantle is something that's left for you when you stay, you stay your hand up and grab it. I mean, you know, you're grabbing onto a truth. So tonight, serving, yeah. A lot of Christians believe they're serving, but if you don't do it correctly, it can really mess up two people, the person you're trying to serve and, and you, amen, because there's loyalties that are expected. You know, just because you have a title, and this is my rant for the entire body of Christ, just because you carry a title doesn't mean that you're entitled to somebody having to serve you. It's an it's a earned two-way street because you cannot serve somebody who's not reciprocating and leading you properly. Amen? So I mean, you know that everybody in here, if you aspire to be a great Christian, you need to learn how to be a great example. And I can tell you straight from working for the state, man. Amen. I work for the state, and I say this all the time because most of these guys are dead already. Anyway, most of the supervisors in the state got there because of seniority. And all of them that got there by seniority had mastered the art of laziness. And when they get to the top, they're going to demand that you not be lazy. All the while, they have mastered laziness. So they try and do the opposite. I just call that bipolar disorder. Amen. Amen. Just say amen because you guys know you've worked with somebody... Probably in your past, maybe not in a state or county, but you've worked for somebody who got there because of seniority, right? Or brown nosing, amen? And they get there, and then they try and tell you how to work, and you've watched them. They weren't a good example, yeah? And then you're like, who gave you the title? Amen. All right, so I was a very rebellious person, amen? Because I don't like stupid people. I never did. If you're stupid and try and tell me how to be smart, I know you're stupid still, yet. Yeah? Amen. How many of you are like that? You can recognize stupid way far away. Amen. That's why you're in this church, because we're the smartest people in the city. Just believe that. All right. So let's read here. Most Christians don't understand the reason they are where they are, physically, spiritually, or financially. And that's the truth. Amen. Most Christians are trying to figure it out. Trying to figure out formulas. They're trying, and that's why they gravitate towards churches that have five ways you can be blessed. Like, screw that. Anyway, laugh, please. Thank you. There's not five ways you can be blessed. There's one way you can be blessed. And he's already blessed you. And, oh, my God. Seriously? So you've got to maintain your blessing level. You've got to stay in that place. Amen? Now, if you swerve away, I mean, you know, you off road. That's where swerve comes from. All right? So they don't understand the reason they are where they are. God requires you to, read it, serve him with 
Everything you have, including your finances. How many know that everything you have is a service to the Lord? Everything you have is on loan to you because when you drop dead, remember, nothing you have is yours anymore. It ain't yours. Amen. Like I told you before, somebody will dress you and put you in a box. You better hope they liked you. Otherwise, you can be like those old ladies I see at funerals all the time. They look like clowns. I don't even recognize them. I got to check the name at Doro at the front and see if I'm at the right funeral. All right. All right. So serving God requires a change in your attitude. When you serve him, you, you will be more concerned with the giving of yourself to others rather than keeping things for yourself. And that's kind of the truth that we got to get after. You're here not for yourself. In all you're giving, you have getting. If you don't like how you're getting, you got to check how you're giving. It's the same as your thought life. Because how many know that when you give your thoughts as words out, how many know you got to expect what's coming back to you? You know that words are seeds, right? Your service to others, including the Lord, they're seeds. Because how many know you're only going to get what you give? So you, if you give loyalty and love and servi servitude, how many are you going to get that later? But you got to pay your dues, amen? A uh, good example of this is in the Bible. Um, the king always had an armor bearer. You guys know what an armor bearer is? This guy would carry the king's armor all around, and he would do whatever the king asked, anything, because he knew that one day he would be in a position of authority, and he would have to get the same thing that he gave. Uh, if he's giving loyalty and service, uh, how many know that he automatically will get that later? And that's how the kingdom of God works. It's not a democracy, you guys. It's a theocracy. You guys know what a theocracy is? It's like a monarchy. It's whatever the, the king or whatever the person in charge wants, you will do that without question. In America, we question everything. Am I right? Yeah. Why do we question everything? Because it's a democracy. I can tell you right now, a perfect example is if King Kalaka was alive today and he says, I want the telescope on the mountain. You think anybody would be on that mountain with a sign? Because what would happen to them? It's a monarchy. What would happen to him? Yeah. Would they say, I protest you and march in front of Iolani Palace? What would happen to them? Basically, you would die. Why? Because it's not a democracy. It's a theocracy. It's a monarchy. Uh, this is the way the kingdom of God is set up. The same way. You serve God and you serve all of his representatives. Amen. And whether you like the way they live or not, it's not up to you to judge their life. That's why Jesus said, judge not. Okay, so if you understand how the kingdom of God works, it is your great pleasure to have whatever comes into your life be at the ready to pass on to somebody else because you know on the back side of that is your getting because you're going to keep getting to give. If you don't have to give, it's because you're not getting to get. All right. All right, a true servant is willing to be inconvenienced for the sake of serving God and building his kingdom. Amen. So I'm not here trying to build slaves. That's not what we're about. I'm just telling you that this all has to be a well-oiled machine. Everybody has to do it correctly. It's a family. You know, in a family, there's chores, right? Um, if your father is a dictator, he's not going to say, Hey, you guys mind doing the dishes tonight? If your father said, Do the dishes. It's your turn. I want you to do it now. Who are you to question that? In today's society, we know like lick our kids, so our kids lick us with their attitude. Amen? They keep licking because, you know, oh, I don't know what to do with these kids. Crack them. Pull the ear. Bro, they're all nerds and geeks and princesses and princes. How you know that they walk around like they can do Oh, I don't want to do that now. Bro. I used to get the back end of the belt with the buckle side, not the belt. My father would make mistakes on purpose with the belt. You guys know what I mean? He's going to teach you a lesson, and that lesson is not taught in school. Amen? You know, one time I went to school, I was limping. My father gave me a dirty leg. I went to school because oh, I, did, I didn't do something he asked. I was limping, and the teacher said, how come you limping? I said, oh, my dad gave me a leg. And she goes, good for you. Listen to your father. You know what would happen in today's society? Be like, oh my God, we gotta call CPS. We gotta call, we gotta alert the authorities, get the counselor, get the social workers. All and like, oh my God, these kids. That's why they all get phones in their hand, and not one broom. Yeah, 
I saw they got a nigga on video game in their hand and now on vacuum. Huh? You know that most kids don't know how to polish on car? Amen? Because we know, oh, it's okay. I'll just take it to the detailer. Screw that. You get, if you get kids, every one of them is a detailer. Get out there. All of you detail now. Make this car look good because one day you're going to have kids. You're going to want your car to look good. Amen? I remember my dad used to sit on a chair with cotton mouth after a hot night of drinking. You know what his first order of business was? Somebody better be making him ice water and keep it coming. You guys remember those days? Cotton mouth? Yeah. All right. Oh, man. Lickings was just for fun. He would give us lickings. Just for make sure. Amen? All right. So here, let's look at Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. And you can kind of see kind of where we're at with all of this. Amen. I'm going to jump on into the word right away. And it says here, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul? You guys know what your soul is? All right, some of you remember your mind, your will, and your emotions. I remember one time, if I wanted to throw a tantrum and jump on the floor and start crying in front of my father or my mother, bro, that ain't happening. You guys remember that? Yeah? Try to run around the store and your parents in the store. Now, it's gotten crazy. Crazy. I did, wherever I go, I just watch kids. I'm totally amazed that the kids can do whatever they like. Yeah, I saw a little kid screaming at the parents, I hate you. I'd be like, oh boy, this kid would have teeth on the back of his head. <laughs> and I, I'm not an abuser, by the way. <laughs> that is just sometimes you need to give them the holy flick of the Lord. <laughs> I remember getting those flicks right on the head and be like rubbing my head, not even comprehending why I got that, but knowing I did something because I just had memory loss. Like, but in the kingdom of God, God is not out to punish you anymore. It's up to you, right? Because of grace and kingdom living. I mean, you know, whatever you give is what you get. Whatever you do is what will be done for you. Jesus himself says, do, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So the opposite is in effect. You do to others what you want done for you. And you don't do to others what you don't want done to you. Amen? Does that make sense to you? This right here is real simple. He's talking to the whole nation of Israel. What does he require of you? It was real simple because you see already the heading is the essence of the law. The law was given so that they could understand that without a theocratic mindset, they were going to fail at the law. Because anytime you sin or commit a I don't know, if you violate any statute in the law, how many of you know anytime you commit any kind of sin is because you put the focus on self? Come on now. Think about that. Think about it for a hard second because anytime you fell short, it's because you were serving your own best interests. Amen? Any, any couple, any fraternal brotherhood, brothers, sisters, whatever, workplace, harmony. I mean, no, when somebody focuses on themselves, somebody else suffers down the line. It's kind of unreal because if you look at government, it's because if you have one individual in, in, in a, maybe even a county office or whatever, if they're looking out for their own leisure, they're going to have the whole public is going to suffer. Because of the lack of service and customer service. If they say, ah, I'm going to coffee break. I don't need. The whole line starts growing. Amen. And, and everybody gets disgruntled. And that's kind of how it works. If you say, you know what? I'm paid to work. I'm just going to work until I get the line down. And then I'm going to take my break. No. They want it now. My way. For me. This is how I like it. And then you got problems. So if you're going to get. Um, anything out of the kingdom of God is because of what you gave in. Simple as that. Amen? I know it's a hard message for some of you because this is the kind of message where you start catching yourself like, oh, oh, he's scolding me. And you would only think that if you weren't living a 
sacrificial life where you're here to serve others. If you're here to be served, you're going to have a problem. I would never, ever tell you as a church, this church, to do something that I wouldn't be willing to do. Because you got to remember, before any of you arrived on the scene in this church, I was doing everything that I asked you to do. And I don't ask you to do hard stuff. I did everything. You know, when I first started this church, I would clean the bathrooms and the toilets. I would vacuum. I would clean all the furniture. We had white plastic chairs when we first started. I would take cleaner and wipe down every chair. Because I wanted to make sure that whoever sat on that chair wasn't sitting on some germ-filled factory. Because how I many you know that I'm responsible for that? I would do everything. And people look at me like, oh, you don't do nothing. Really? Remember now, everything you're looking at, everything you're hearing, you know, all of these things take preparation. Yeah, I can go back and go clean toilets and do all those things, but something will sacrifice itself down the line. Maybe your sermon will only be three lines. It's of 50 lines, you know. But I believe in information, right? Information is power. Knowledge is power. So I try and empower you guys with the best. Say amen. Because if I'm sacrificing something else, if I'm over there making the chili, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do on the other side. You know what I mean? So thank you to all of you who serve the Lord here because it's not a hard task to do, but we're very appreciative of your efforts. Amen? You step in and do it. It's a family, right? All right? So all of you deserve thanks. You know, you can all pat yourself on the back and say, yeah, it's my back. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, but... Hmm. Hallelujah. How many of you enjoy a good massage? Come on, be honest. How many of you know you cannot massage yourself very well? And that's how you work the kingdom of God. We're here for somebody else. Amen. Okay, back to your notes. I hope this is making sense for some of you. Because these sermons come out as a result of people asking me how they can, how they can get more blessing, which is crazy. Or how can I be more prosperous? You cannot be more prosperous. There's no such word as more prosperous. Either you're prosperous or you're in poverty. Amen? It can't be both, right? All right, so for you, you know, God requires you to serve him with, read it, all your heart, mind, and with your entire being. If you don't think of yourself in anything you do for the Lord, you will see great miracles happen. Because remember, I get tired too. People ask me, oh, Pastor, you can go. And I go. Not because of anything other than when I need something, I'm going to want somebody to be there for me. Amen. So all you guys owe me. Okay. I just play. You know, owe me nothing. The Bible says, owe no man anything but to love him. But you will be the greatest servant if you love and put others before yourself. Now, God has commanded you to serve your earthly masters as service unto Him. All right, let's look at the scripture, Ephesians 6. All right, a lot of people read scripture, but they don't quite get what's happening here. Right here, bond servants. This is Paul writing now. He says, bond servants. Another word for bond servant is a slave, right? Be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and Trembling, insincerity of heart as to Christ. Because you're doing this for who? You're serving the Christ in everyone, the Jesus in everyone. Not with eye service. You guys know what eye service is? To be seen and noticed by others as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ. So you actually enslaved yourself to Christ, not to man, but you're serving man as if you're serving Christ. That's all it's telling you. Amen? Doing the will of God from the heart, with goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. So it's not man. You're not brown-nosing man to get something from man. You're doing this unto the Christ in man, and God sees what nobody else sees, and he re rewards you openly for what you do in secret. Yeah, but you know some people, they do it because they want to be seen. Now, I've had a parade of people come in here as associate pastors or leaders, and they come in with the wrong attitude. They think they come in here and then people got to bow down to them. I'm like, nobody's going to bow down to you. Are you kidding me? They'll serve you, but I mean, you know, they want a good example to serve. I'm here to tell you, even if they don't give you a good example, just serve them anyway and walk away quickly. Amen? 
Hello. Amen. You know, at one time I had a, a couple that I went to church with at the first church I had attended. And they had become pastors at their church. Okay. These, this couple basically told me this. They said we, they had started a church in um, way e, uh, I'll just say Saipan. That's where they were. They went from Hawaii to Saipan to start a church. They were there. Their church it was kind of small. They were struggling a lot. But they felt like they were the king and the queen of Saipan. Amen. They're from Hilo. But what happened was they weren't doing well there, even in their health. So what happened is they came all the way back to Hilo and they called me and they said, Brother Tim, they didn't even call me a pastor. They said, Brother Tim, can we, can we have a meeting with you? And I'm thinking, gee, I wonder what they want. And I was thinking, maybe they want to just join up because they were disgruntled with the first church that we all got kind of disgruntled with. And I went, they took me to Hilo, Hawaii. Wow, I mean, impressive. And I was kind of a big boy back then. Oh, wow. So at this dinner, and this is what they told me straight. They said, the husband and the wife sat there, and they said, we're, we're moving back to Hawaii, and we want to be a part of a ministry that's thriving and strong here. And we believe, and they told me straight, with a straight face, they told me, God brought us here to be your pastor. I said, huh? And they said, um, yeah, so we have a plan to come, uh, uh, come to your ministry, take over, and have you come under us to learn how to pastor. I was already at church for about five years at this time. And I thought to myself, like, um, did I fall off a truck and hit my head or something? Because I don't quite get what, what they're headed toward. And they basically told me, this is the will of the Lord. And I walked away from that. And they had called me for weeks and weeks. And I would tell them, you know what, this is not happening. They'd say, oh, you're not hearing God. God has clearly spoken to us. And you know us, brother. We hear God. We would never step outside. We know that this is God's will. And if you don't allow us to do this and you don't come under, your church is going to fail within one year. Let me look at the calendar. Well, needless to say, the man, nice guy, but very gruff kind of guy. Within one year, he was dead. And the wife is no longer in ministry anywhere. So what, huh, who, what, who heard God? Anyway, see, how many know that I think it was for them to just join up and sit in? Because I was already touching on the grace message. I was starting to move into what we teach now. I think it would have been better for them to come under me. But they, pride won't do that, right? Because you've been a Christian way longer than me. you more smart than me. I have a word for that. Hello, hallelujah. Hmm. Now, if one of you was even more inclined revelationally to teach me, I would come under you gladly right now. Amen. Another church, we tried to merge up one time because God was heading me out. I was starting to travel every other week I was on the mainland. It was like that. We tried to merge with this other church. When that didn't happen, they called me all kind of evil too. It wasn't my fault. I'll tell you that story another time. You blow your mind. That church is kind of shrunken down too now. From seven or 800 down to like 30. That's a whole lot of message for you guys. All right. So you guys get this now? Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from who? From the Lord. Amen. What does that mean for us today? Whether he is slave or free. How many you know that there's a lot of Christians that are enslaved in their mind? They still believe in the law. So that makes them a slave to the law. But are you a slave to the law? Say no, please. Don't think about it, you lolo. We're grace. Amen. We talk about grace. But there are consequences to every behavior. Am I right or am I wrong? Okay, good for you. You got it. All right. Back to your notes now. All right. God has commanded you to serve your earthly masters as service unto him. Masters is not, again, a slave word. It's just a word now 
That just means that you have authority over you. Amen. All right. Good for you. Many of you have come with ideas on how the church can raise more money because our mortgage went way up. We doubled up when we moved here. Okay, so we really need to do those kind of things. We need everybody to be a tither and a giver. All right. Uh, when you serve those in authority over you, such as your employer or pastor, you are serving God. It's just how it is. Am I commanding you to do that? No, because my first pastor did that to me. He commanded me to serve him. And I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to be rebellious 99.9% of the time. You tell me what to do, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to prove to you there's another way. Better for me. Amen. Yeah. All right. How many of you, your boss tells you to do something, and you're thinking, there's a better way for me that I can do it. Do the same thing with less stuff involved. Yeah, always, right? Because you're more smart than your boss. <laughs> hey, man, all right. You know, we're all relatively smart people. You know why? Because we've mastered the art of laziness, so we do things shortcut. Amen. Yeah, man. All right. Okay. Serving God requires a change in your attitude. You know what your attitude is? Break up the word. It's what you're at. When you're at it, how I many you know that you, if you have the right motivation and intentions, everything is smooth in your life. Amen. Yeah, yeah you're going to come across your occasional idiot. But what can you do? Just keep serving the Lord. Remember, you're not doing you're not serving them, you're serving the Lord in them. Right? So you gotta change your attitude. Now, Hebrews twelve, twenty eight, as you take a look at this, it'll talk talk about what's there on the paper or on your notes there on the screen. Hebrews twelve, verse twenty eight. Almost there, yeah, yeah. Oh, we can see all her work. Uh huh. Yeah. Get them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, you can see that. Therefore, since we are receiving a, you guys see the word kingdom? Lower case. Therefore, since we are receiving a way God does things that cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. You know that either you play, okay, think of it this way. Either you, because of Acts 2, um, the Bible says that a tongue of fire sat on every person. It wasn't like the little flame that you see in a Catholic church. It was you became consumed by fire so that you would walk in the spirit. You would always be able to burn away anything that would try and overtake you. That's kind of why the Holy Spirit is there for you. And God is a consuming fire. So I mean, you know that fire cannot consume fire. You guys get that? So if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, how many know that you are a fire and God is a consuming fire? He will burn away anything that isn't of Him. How many know that fire cannot consume fire? You just become more of a fire with Him. So whatever evil is out there, you just burn it up quick. All right, as long as you understand how this stuff works. Because the word kingdom means God's way of doing things. Because God has an attitude that He desires for His children to walk in. So if God does things a certain way, who are you? You guys get it? If God has a way of doing things, who are you to come with a whole other idea? If God does it one way in his kingdom, how I many know that you should just fall into line with that? Because in that path is great blessing. All right? And when we talk about great blessing, it's not spiritual blessing, it's manifested Blessings along the lines of health, relationships, um, wealth. Amen. Don't you want great wealth and great health and great relationships? You can have great relationships. You know how? Get rid of the bad ones. Shake it out. Amen. And whatever's left is the ones you hang out with. Remember something. Jesus didn't come to be. He didn't come to earth to be a friend of anybody except sinners. That's what the Bible says. He came as a friend of sinners. Why? That placed him in a place not to be overtaken by their behavior, but to show them a better way by example. Well, you know that you're a living, breathing, walking example for other people. 
take a stand, stand up for something. Most people just kind of say, oh, I don't like me, Trump. Uh, shut up your head. If Jesus came with that attitude, you know what happened? We would still be looking for a Savior. Right? I don't think Jesus came deliberately to make trouble, but I think just by his way of doing things, which is more kingdom and grace, it already upset the establishment. So I want mean, you know that you're not here. You should be a person that stands up for what's right. Amen? You know how you stand up for what's right? Do something better. Do something right. Other people will want to do that. Amen. All right. You guys catching what I'm saying tonight? I was you're not funny tonight. Go get a mirror. Look at yourself. Amen. You're funny all day long. Just look in a mirror. And pick yourself apart. Amen. All right. Back to you. <laughs> All right, so serve God with reverence and godly fear. Amen. Serve the Lord with joy. That's Psalm 2, verse 11. Just take a look. See, the Old Testament is a type and shadow of the New Testament. It always spoke of things to come that were already happening. Everybody's still looking to the clouds for help. Brad, where are your feet? On the clouds. Wow. What does it say here? This is Old Testament. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Why would it say that? Because back then, you really had to please the Lord. Amen? Because of the law. Now, should you serve the Lord with fear? Well, I mean, you know, fear should take on a whole new meaning for you. You should serve the Lord as if he's watching. That's kind of, yeah, respect. That's kind of the fear, the reverence you have that you don't want to do something that wouldn't be pleasing to God because you know that He is the person that manifests all blessings through you. Because if you don't do it correctly, how I many you know that now you just delayed whatever's supposed to come your way and manifest it? You know that most people who are sick, you know, okay, let's just talk about that. Somebody who's sick, they come and want to be served. But the attitude should be different. If you're sick, you should come to serve. Hallelujah. If you're sick, you should minister healing so a healing passes through you. You don't come in like, oh, I know because old people do this all the time. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. they start telling me all their problems. You can pray for me. because, You know, sometimes I tell older people who are suffering with whatever they have, ailments, I tell them, yeah, pray for me. Put your hand on me. Pray for me. Because it's got to come through them the other way. It's been going the other way and it's not working for them. It has to come the other way. Does it, do I make sense to you? You know, there's a lot of old-time Christians, Pentecostal. They think they know everything, but they're stupid. You know why? It doesn't work. They've been doing it for years and it don't work. And they're still expecting the same result. That's insanity, if you ask me. That's crazy. Do it another way. You want a you wanna healing? Pray for healing for somebody. You want money, you got to give money. Hello? You want a healing, you better give a healing. You see, but most people, don't, they don't think that way because the enemy has tricked them into thinking, well, I'm a, I'm a long-time Christian. These young ones should serve me. Shut your face. You're not an example at that point. Serve them. They'll learn how to serve. Don't get me going. Hallelujah. Some of these guys, I like bag them and tag them. You know what I mean? They don't belong serving in church because they know in the air. If rain in church, they'd be dead. Amen. The sprinkler went on. They all dropped dead. Wow. Like turkeys out in the rain. Okay. Next. Back to your notes. Amen. Yeah, it's cool. I'm just trying to get you guys blessed. Whether you like it or not, it's up to you. Remember now, you come in this, into this world very dumb. Don't stay that way. Amen? Because babies are born. They are ignorant of how to live. Amen? Some people never migrate from childhood into adulthood. Why? Because they always, what about me? Nobody loved me. My father left me. My mother ignoring me. Shut up already. <laughs> Why don't you do something different than was done to you? You know, my dad rejected me for a long time. You know, I didn't let that stop me. I just said, I used that as, as a challenge. Every time he says, ah, you're never going to do that. Within days, I'll be doing it. Because of rebellion. Amen. 
Remember now, you cannot tell me your father abandoned you. My father abandoned me too, and he was living in the house. Figure that one out. Yeah? So do I blame him now? No, because he's not here for blame. If your father is not in your life to blame, don't blame him. Do your life. Amen. Hallelujah. I know all of you. It's, the saying is it takes two to tangle. You get it right? But funny, you are the worst dancer when you're by yourself. You will dance even if you don't have a partner. So why not do that? If somebody's rejected you, screw them. Dance your own dance. Amen. Audience of one, right? God watching you. Dance for God. Amen. How many of you sing in a shower? Yeah? How well? Well, we don't know because you're in a shower. But don't judge the people that do sing. Ooh, ooh. I have a right to question uh, the singers. Why? Because I got a minister under that that they brought out. If it sounds like minor birds fighting at Highly Church in a tree, then I'm going to have a hard time minister that night. Amen? So, some of you like. But if their heart is right, it overrides the lack of talent. Thank God for the angels filtering everything and presenting it to God. Some of them dancing like no more music. They sing it like no more melody. But it's okay. God filters it. Amen. That's why if you want to judge this, sing loud out here. Help them along, right? Because don't you answer other people's or finish other people's sentences? Why? Because they're like, um, yeah, and you start trying to finish it. Well, here's worship. It's not going well. Finish it. Amen. Somebody look at me like, He is a relatively smart people. Relatively smart also means relatively dumb. Right? Because you got to have the other half. You ever had a nickel with only one side? No, why? Because you get two sides. So, yeah, I'm pretty smart. Pretty smart. Pretty dumb. Okay, let's all be smart, right? How do you serve the Lord? Simple. You look out for somebody else better than yourself. The Bible says esteem others better than you esteem yourself. Amen. But it's hard to esteem others when you're not around others. Amen. I hope I'm making sense. You got to be in a position to serve others to call yourself a servant. You cannot be home cruising and saying, I serve in the Lord. The earliest scripture says you serve others as if you're serving Christ. And where are all the Christians? I'm waiting. Somebody throw me an answer here. Give me a bone. Well, the Christians in our church are where on a Sunday? Oh, at home. Yeah, plenty of them at home. The majority of them should be should be home. So you got to come home to serve them. Amen. Uh, this is not scolding for anybody unless they're really convicted. Well, too bad. whoop de doo Amen. Do it different. All right. You guys reading up here now? Serve the Lord with joy. A servant will serve with the right motive. You guys know what a motive is? It's not a local motive. Local motive. Anyway, a local motive is the way everybody in Hilo does things. Do it different. Amen. The what about me? Anyway. All right. It displeases God when you serve him with the wrong motives. If you're serving God to get, that's already the wrong motive. You should serve because you love God. And he will exhibit his great love for you, the Bible says. All right. God cares more about your attitude than your achievements. God don't care how much papers you get on the wall. Amen. Amen. When I go to like a lawyer's office like I did this week or a doctor's office, I always look on the wall, see where they graduated from. Right? Now if it says Harvard University, how many of you like, whoa, that's a good doctor. Really? Why would that qualify him to be a good doctor? What if he was a C student? 
just barely scraping by high every day in class, but passing. But what if it says University of Papaiko? But he was an A student. Who you pick? Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you. Chicken pie. Anyway. I was a patient at Kaiser for a few years. And what I found was, you know, they had all these doctors who come in. And one day, this one doctor came in. And he was, I sauce. So I was like, only Filipino say that. He's like, I sauce. And he's looking at my chart. He's like, ay, 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 ay. And he was looking at my chart. He go, you know, these doctors should have caught this. He said, I'm going to prescribe this. You tell me how you feel in two weeks. Gave me this wonder drug. I started taking it. I felt really good. And he said, see, American medicine don't think outside the box. He was from the PI. And I had a newfound respect. I said, just because they educated in America, no mean they smart. This guy was Pili Pino. So when I cannot get a doctor's appointment at my regular doctor, I always go to the urgent care by Poinaco. You know why? That's the Filipino who was my doctor. And he come in, he go, Ay, sauce Maria, how come you're here today? Oh. I tell him, he go, ah. He go, yeah, just do this one. And it's all good. He's fast. He's smart. He's not dumb. And his, I don't even know... Uh, his college is University of Makadang Dang Malapit. <laughs> and whatever, bro. It works. Amen. It works. God is good. Amen. Just because it says Harvard. Oh, my God. Yale. Anyway. Most of you girls in here went to the University of Yale. You're still yelling. Still snapping. University of Snapcase. I have my masters in bitching. Anyway. All right. Okay. Good. Hey. Right. Let's tell it like it is. Right. Amen. All the men in here. <laughs> Nervous kind. <laughs> You're going to hear it in a car. Oh, oh, I heard you laughing at what Pastor said. Yeah. Huh? My masters in what? Huh? You're about to hear it now. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. Local girls. Where you learned that from? Because your father knows home. Anyway. Good? All right. God is more concerned with your attitude than your acts. Amen. Acts. The only way to prosper is to have a servant's heart. Okay, let's talk about this. Prosperity is about serving God. Why? Because you, you're going to help prosper the prosperer. Does that make sense? You're going to provide for the provider. What greater honor is there in the world than to do for God what He is already doing? But He will know because not many people do it for Him. Have you ever gone into prayer and asked God what He wanted rather than tell Him what you wanted? See, there's a huge difference when you go into prayer with that attitude. Lord, what do you want? Amen? Because if you go in there and telling him what you want, he'll be like, come back later. No, I'm telling you. I've learned the secret to this. Uh, I would always go in, Lord, what do you want? Just tell me what you want. Your servant is listening according to the word. Amen? And I just do whatever he tells me to do. Sometimes he don't tell me what to do. He just expects me to do it the way that the Bible already said it should be done. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, prosperity is about serving God. He gives you things with which to serve Him because He's not going to leave you hanging. He's going to provide for you how He wants to be provided. If you say, Lord, I will give you anything, whatever you want. Just tell me what you want. And He's like, I already gave you. Give back to me. So let's see if you know the Word. The Word is always Jesus. Amen? Some of you are more concerned with what you don't have rather than what you could have. Amen? How many of you know that God is better than a lottery ticket because He's regularly providing? Amen? Some people waiting for the publisher's clearinghouse, $5,000 a week for life. 
What if you get that thing and you're so happy you drop dead? Oh, five grand, you're dead, pa, one week. <laughs> oh, 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 you never make them one week. We're going to pay you. got to retroactive this thing and prorate them over seven days. $800. Here you go. Hallelujah. Don't bank on worldly things. God is wanting to give you more than that. All right, and he already has. All you got to do is access that thing. It's like a big water balloon over you, and you got the stick to poke it, but you're acting like you cannot reach. You're like, oh, I don't can reach God. You didn't make them too high. Because you're supposed to be up that high, seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen? All right. God will give you more if you will use it to serve him. Hello. You know, all of this prosperity scriptures, the money scriptures, it says that with what measure you use, God will measure back. Amen. So what does that mean to you? Oh, well, I get like 83 cents. Oh, when you keep getting 83 cents, no cry. Amen. What measure you use. Now, prosperity should be used to serve God, not yourself only. I mean, some of you are very generous. Even if you only have EBT, are you generous with that? Say amen, because there's some of you in here on EBT. And here's the thing. That's a temporary solution. Right? Because God is, what you give, I mean, he's going to give back to you. But he's not going to give you back EBT. He's going to give back to you in cash and health and relationships. Amen? If God is asking you to do... Now, here's... Sometimes God tells me to tell you to do something. And I tell you to do it because it's not for me. It's for you. When I ask you to do something, it's not for me. It's for you. It's to help you prosper your mindset. Amen? It's just showing you a whole other way. If you say, ah, pastor's full of crap. Then what, what am I to do with that? No, even that because some of you have said that in your mind. You know, I, I hear it. I say some things like, oh, Pastor, you're just full of it. And then I watch you go. <laughs> and then you look at me like, Pastor, how come you never tell me? I told you in the beginning, you fool. <laughs> Remember, you don't have to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting to get good counsel and advice. It comes right from here. The pulpit. Now. Don't say, Pastor, next Thursday, 4.30, I can get it with you. Bro, get it now. I'm telling you, get it now. You can put this into play now. Yes. Amen. You guys all right? All right. You know one thing? What, what if you got a prescription for something that, okay, you're sick, maybe you antibiotics. How many of you ever got a prescription for antibiotics? Yeah? You go in there with some kind of inf infection or whatever, and the doctor says, okay, let me write this prescription. I'll call it in. And then you go to your pharmacy, and they say, Oh, we out, because this happens a lot in Hilo, because everybody's on pills. Oh, we out. We expect shipping in about three to four weeks. So you got to deal with this raging infection for three to four weeks. How many of you know, you like thinking, I want to kill all of you. Why? Because we're the society of now. You know that God is the God of now, but he's also the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can access his prosperity at any moment you want. But you got to change your, your attitude and your mindset. Amen? Don't look at anything that comes from this pulpit as you got to. Because you know got to do nothing. And some of you have proven you know got to do what I say. And when it comes for you, time for your blessings, you know got to get no blessings. You know got to get no blessings. Amen? Because I can tell you right now, you're going to blame somebody. So, how many of you feel like you're getting scolding right now? Oh. Oh. My mother used to do this. You see this right there? It's the world's smallest violin playing a tune for you. What you going to do? It's all up to you. You have free agency. You don't need to listen to nothing I say. Do whatever you like. But I tell you, make sure you walk. 
Okay, walk when the light says walk, and you go, yeah, no more cars, and you walk, and here comes a, that guy was speeding. You never follow the rules of the game. Amen. Hallelujah. There's rules to everything. Amen. How many of you believe that one day you'll fly like an angel? Huh? How many of you believe that? Because people always say this. Oh, when somebody dies, heaven just gained another angel. That's a demotion, guys. You were created higher than the angels and you're going to demote yourself in heaven. Hello, the angels are here to serve you. When you die, you're going to be like them. Bubbles, you feel like you're going to fly like an angel? Start now. Climb to the top. Jump off and we'll all watch you flap. Oh. Couldn't fly. Wasn't equipped to be an angel. Maybe Charlie's angel with your gun. <laughs> Some of you do that. Get alive. Right. Okay, next one. Look for opportunities to serve God. What? Some of you like, oh, where's the opportunities? It's right in front of you. Every opportunity is directly in front of you. It's the people you live and work with and maybe serve alongside. There's your opportunity right there. Be an example for them. They will be an example for others. They make movies out of this stuff called Pay It Forward. Oh, my God. Seriously? I was at McDonald's one time, and the girl said, Oh, the guy in front of you already paid. I was like, that punk. Why you never tell me before I went out? That's not a blessing. You want to be a blessing should be what I want. Because he heard my order. Okay, that's cheap enough. I'll go pay for him in a bag. How about you say, uh, keep ordering. The guy at the window right now go pay everything. Okay, give me one of everything on the menu. And then give me... I want 800 chicken McNuggets. <laughs> no need cook them. <laughs> Just cook me 20. The rest, keep them frozen in a case. Throw them in my car. <laughs> right? If he's truly going to bless me. Then watch him like, ah, rah! Anyway, yeah. See how we've become accustomed to blessing people the way we think they should be blessed. Right? Hallelujah. This one guy one time, I'll tell you guys this story. He's a trip. We got saved around the same time. He's a pastor. Anyway, you know, if you're a pastor, you got to look behind you, see who's following. If nobody following, you're just Joe Schmo. We got saved around the same time. Uh, we went our separate ways. I, you know, I went through the school of hard knocks, started, you know, this church, a city of joy. Uh, he went all the way to Rama Bible School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Whoop doo! Said Scooby Doo. Anyway, Raggy. Anyway, <laughs> he went all the way over there. After about five, six years, he came back. First thing, I ran into him at Safeway. He was he was using a cane. This guy's only like one year older than me, I think. And he was using a cane. I go, oh, what's up? He go, oh, I get problems. Oh, okay. I thought, so how's it going anyway? Everything all right? He go, oh, yeah. I get this Bible study at my house, bro. Get six of us. And we just go through the word like how I went through the word. And I got my pastoral papers. And he was he was another one telling me, so, you think I should come to your church and maybe I can show you some things? You know what I'm thinking to myself? You can show me something. Show me the way out of my church when you come. <laughs> Trying to tell me this and that, his papers, or I get, I, want, I get my PhD, my doctorate in like... Are you serious? Bible college, PhD, doctorate. <laughs> You doctor it, no can doctor yourself, you walk in. 
You know what he told me? I told him, hey, I pray, I pray healing and stuff. You know that. He goes, oh, yeah, I heard, but you get plenty of documented miracles. I said, I can pray for you right now. He goes, nah, nah. God is helping me along with this. He's trying to teach me a lesson. I said, you know what would be better for you? You get one two iron. Turn them upside down. Because if God going to teach you a lesson, it's going to be golf lessons. He's not going to teach you limping lessons. How are you going to walk around like this, dragging you like, God is good. Hallelujah. <laughs> not for real. All the papers on the wall don't mean nothing, right? I know some mechanics never went to school, but they can fix one car. They're going to come up with extra parts, but the car going to be fixed. They don't want a paper on the wall. They're not ASE certified. They're more like cool miles certified because half the cigarette is hanging off their mouth in ashes. But they can fix them. Uh-huh. Right? Hallelujah. See, there's some people that are just ar- arrogantly stupid. I'm right here willing to pray. Oh, oh God teaching me something. What are you teaching you? Next time I saw him, Safeway again. He in the motorized wheelchair with the cane in the basket. I just urge. Anyway, how you doing? You need prayer? God get him, brother. Thank you. <laughs> you know when they plug in this electrical motorized wheelchair, you should stick your finger in that outlet at the same time. <laughs> I have power with religious people. Uh. He was like going around telling everybody, oh yeah, because I went to Rayma Bible. Club. Anyway, you know, most people don't even know what Rayma means. <laughs> Do you know what Rayma means? If you're a long time Christian, you know that Rayma is the spoken word of God. Rayma. Right? The alive word of God. Okay? This guy is limping. Part of his leg is dead. Where the alive part come in? Anyway. I'm not picking on one guy, picking on all of them because a lot of them have the same mindset. Amen. My daughter went to Tulsa, Oklahoma for university. She went to Oral Roberts University for the first year. She called me up crying one day. She said, Dad, I'm out of here. I said, why are you out of there? She said, there's, I'm moving to Vegas with Uncle. I said, why? She goes, there's less sin in the city of sin than in Tulsa. I said, really? I said, what's happening? And she started telling me all this stuff. I was like, okay, you're out of there. And UNLV was $4,000 a year. Or Roberts, whoop it up, 28000 a year. I said, you're out of there. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Big difference, right? All right. And you know what? The degree is the same, right? The paper on the wall. Who cares where you went? Just make your own. Go home and make your own. Panaeva College of Arts and Industries or Panaeva Agriculture and Engineering or something. Eh? You can make your own, right? Huh? Kohala A&M. Hey, well, who going to dispute that? Like, well, you know, purple. He must be smart. Just go in the bathroom. Take two pieces of toilet paper. Show them in your head. I get my papers. Anyway, most of you smoke more papers than you're going to earn. <laughs> All you guys know the speed of the burn of paper. No lie to me. The paper no good, Pastor. To burn too fast. <laughs> Still get weed left. Yeah, most of you are experts, eh? I don't use paper. You know why? It take too long for... I use pl- I use glass. <laughs> oh, help me, <you>, Father. <laughs> you guys in this room, most of you are more in tune with cloud nine rather than waiting for the clouds to arrive. <laughs> if I say cloud nine, all the eyebrows go up. Start looking at all your smoking partners. You guys think I'm dumb. I know you guys a long time. And what I don't know, people going to tell me. And what, pe- what I don't know and what people don't tell me, I'm going to make up. 
and I'm not going to be too far off. You know, as soon as I t- start talking about people are like more interested in their purse or bathroom or that's enough already. I'm not even looking at you guys. Okay. You all right? See, own your life. Own all the stuff you did. Be proud and loud like you was when you was doing them. Why are you going to be all quiet now? <laughs> That's the shut up already. <laughs> be loud and proud like you was when you did it. Amen. Or some of you still doing it. Just be loud and proud, you arrogant so-and-so. Anyway, it's all good. Amen. Do I judge you? I don't care. All I'm here to tell you is as much money as you put into that, put it into the kingdom now. Some of you are like, oh my God, that's like thousands and thousands. Eh, which price do you want to pay? You can get more high with Jesus than you can on a bond. Well, you guys think I don't know about these things, eh? I know, I know your stuff. Some of you have been tempted lately. You've been coming along a long way. And like, every time you get these setbacks in your mind, it's like, oh, it's more easy to just forget high. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. Don't squander what you've built up. Yeah. God has already been using you to build up this anointing in your life. Don't squander it by hanging out with dumb people. I had one guy one time, he was a raging meth addict. And he's like, Pastor, came to the altar. Pastor, I renounced my past. I'm never doing that again. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, he got a job, started keeping him away from church. How oh, you know that? Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. But if you don't follow up and try and get back in the Word, see what happened to him was, now he started working Wednesdays and Sundays. He would have off Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday and Sunday, working, working, working. Started pulling him away from church. Now he started to stay late after work. No good thing happens when you uh, hanging out with your friend. What are you doing in a parking lot? They started passing the duchy. No act like you don't know what that is. And all of a sudden he's like, ah, yeah, a couple hits, not going to hurt. After that, they start passing the pipe. And pretty soon, he was twice as worse, if there's such a thing as twice as worse. Twice as worse, sir. Came back afterward, all his teeth gone, his eyes all sunken in, his face all wrinkled. Tell me, Pastor, help me. Of course, I can try and help you, but you're going to have to quit that job. And he's like, I cannot. I got to provide for my family. I go, yeah, buying meth can provide for your family, for real. You see how dumb the stories get? You think you're doing good. Actually, all you got to do is quit that, come back to church, get healthy, and God will give you another job. Because God has no shortage of, shortage of jobs. And then he, it says in a word, He will use all manner of men to pour into you. Your bosom means your heart. He's going to use all manner of men to pour into you. All you got to do is start being an example again. Because yeah, he was a great example. He's bringing people to church. All of a sudden, he disappeared. Hallelujah. What are you going to do now? Who are you bringing to church now? Hallelujah. Okay. It's awful quiet in here. <laughs> Some of you get that much temptation for real? Oh, boy. All right. All right. Prosperity should be used to serve God, not yourself only. Look for opportunities to serve God. Do not be self Absorbed. Your name is not Bounty. <laughs> you guys catch that more easy than on Matt's story. Anyway, the heart of the opportunist will destroy the heart of a servant. An opportunist is someone that's looking out for their best interest, not someone else's. Hello? All right. Some of you come to the church in secret and you do things. Amen. And you're like, That's like it. yeah, of course. Go ahead. Amen. Why? Because you're preparing God's house for people to come and receive. Amen. We're still trying to figure out how to clean these things. Anyway, all right. 
somebody was telling me that, oh, you just hire these guys, their company is Chem Dry or whatever. I look them up, no more nobody on the island named Chem Dry. I went Honolulu, get Chem Dry Vin. Anyway, uh, I was like, oh, I, I, I. that close to already, pal. So if you guys know how to improve the facilities, yeah, say something. You know what I mean? You know, Sunday we had children's ministry. You guys remember that? Yeah, because somebody stepped up. They wanted to do it. You know, hallelujah. What else kind of ministries can we start? You guys, let's start one sewing service. How about a sewing service? You guys do that? Yeah? No, just put Cheetos in there. Okay. <laughs> Uh, right before church, I was eating Cheetos. I was thinking, oh, I was gone for three days. I never eat Cheetos three days. This is the thing. This is good. <laughs> My hand was all orange. I was going deep in that bag. Anyway, then I was eating chili. Praise God. Okay. Anybody need chili? Still get for sale? You guys lose out if you don't buy them. You can go cage drive in, $5. over will be what? Dollar, what is wrong with you people? Oh my God. Dollar three eighty. Anyway, tell me that's not the best deal in all of Hilo. But if you make takeout, it's four dollars. So you better I'm gonna make the prices around here. I'm like, wow. Dollar. I like eight. It's about the price of one meal for me anyway, no matter where I go. Hello. Yeah, it's hanging out with my son. Holy cow. That guy. <laughs> no more such thing as $8 even. Make, my wallet is trying to hide in my okole when he come around. <laughs> it's like we're hiding back here. Oh, Mason's here. You know that guy, that monkey, because I know he no listen to me on Spreaker, okay? I went on one trip. I, <laughs> he booked a room for me, okay? I'm going to just tell you guys this. This is how my son's calculated mine works. So he booked a room for me on his discount. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to be there for a while, 900 bucks. Okay, room is normally was 300 so 900 for six nights. That's pretty good, actually. So he's like, okay, Dad, I got you this right over. Okay. I put him on my credit card. He said, when you go there, change your credit card because I cannot afford. I said, okay, whatever. So I went to the hotel, changed credit card, put it on my credit card. All right, so I'm liable for the bill. You know, he, he called me three days later. He goes, Dad, they went bill me for the room. I was like, what? So it's only be a hold. He said, no, the thing came out of my account. I'm short that money. I said, okay. When I ran into him, I gave him the nine hundred dollars. I went. I look at my bill. They bill me the nine hundred. I was like, "Brah, they never bill your car. They bill mine." He go, "Oh, I thought they bill mine." After I gave him the cash. <laughs> now I'm gonna hear the world's saddest story of all time. Duh. Dad, father, my computer just crashed. I need $900. For I can keep your money. <laughs> I told him, give me half and half when you get paid. Okay. Okay, but I can keep half, right? I just said, give me half, and then give me half when you get paid. He's like, no, Dad, please. You know any kids tell you, please? The parents start singing, please release me. Let me go. Just saw him. You know what he said? Dad, I don't want the money. I had to use them. Oh, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Anyway. Well, you guys know. Yeah, your kids run you. Give you the sad face. Dad, mom. Pretty soon you like kill him or you're like, ah, shut up already. You know what you're going to get for Christmas? Nothing. Nada. 
Nothing. That's what I told him. You know what you can get for Christmas? Nothing. You know, he said, but dad, I gave you Bose earphones for Christmas. <laughs> and the year before, I gave you Callaway golf clubs. You know what you can get for Christmas? One kiss right on your forehead. <laughs> These kids, they're smart. Gotta watch them. Let them get outside. That's it, bro. They learn from the best. Why? Because we always cooking everybody a long time. We get what we sold out. Anyway. <laughs> All you guys know how for crook. I talked about that on Sunday, remember? You know how for chop down one eight ball. Anyway, okay, we're moving right along. Okay. All right, Philippians 2. You guys see that? Let's go there. Right, nineteen. All right, and the, okay. So Paul, Paul is writing some things. Right, is this Filipinos too? Verse nineteen. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state, for I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know. His proven character. You see, Paul was writing about me a long time ago. You know. <laughs> what? He is disputing it? <laughs> For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Oh, you know that he was saying these things about Timothy back then, who was his, uh, like his right hand, understudy. He was mentoring Timothy. I mean, you know, that he was talking about, I can vouch for his character because I have seen him in action. Amen. I have watched him be an example. Therefore, I trust him enough to send him to you. It's as if I'm sending somebody exactly like me. Amen. Now, what about you? Speak to yourself now. Am I that kind of person? Who am I when no one is watching? Are you the one pacing the floors looking at, I wonder if I should smoke weed today. I wonder if I should drink today. I wonder if I should call with a party stay. I wonder how much bills I get. Oh, I more money. I wonder. You got to be somebody that is equal with people, without people. You got to be that person of integrity when no one is watching. You got to be the same person as if everybody's watching. You guys know Christians like that. They act like they somebody and then outside they crook you. You ever been crooked by a Christian? Let me raise my hands. Been crooked by people that tell me they love me right to my face. I said, I love you so much. Thank you so much. I'm like, mm hmm. Until when? And so I'm very untrusting of people at times. You guys, I trust you this much. <laughs> right around here. Yeah. Because I got to see more of an example from you to trust you this much. Amen? You guys know what I mean? All right. It's just like that, and it's, it's sad. I trust people with a lot of things. If you want the code to the church, tell me what you're going to do in the church. I'll gladly give you the code to the church. You notice that we don't use keys, we use combinations. Why? Right? Because our, our family should have access to the home. But if you're going to come here and just come over here, eat all the chips, <laughs> drink all the soda, leave all the rubbish around, and say, Oh, is that the church there, Pastor? Thank you. And you're walking out. Yeah, man. Come on. You got to be able to do something for God in there. Amen. All right. How about you do at your house what you would do in God's house? Would you come in here and throw your clothes all over the floor? No, some of you just leave them neatly folded. You're reserving your spot. Anyway. All right, you guys don't know when you're not here, I use your blankets, I use your jacket. I run around naked with your sweater on. <laughs> like, woo, woo, woo. they're not going to know, they're going to come to church, put them on. Anyway. You don't know, right? You leave all your notes over here, I open them, I start reading them. Oh, they wasn't paying attention that day. Oh my God, I never teach them this. 
New Hope. What? Fucker went New Hope. We were writing on a New Hope bulletin. You said one person, they always used to leave their folder in their Bible here, open them up, get all the New Hope bulletins. They go there and then come here. I'm like, you rack a frack, a rack a frack. Trying to compare. There's no comparison. Hallelujah. They're more better than us, right? So they think. Anyway, all right. But some people are like that. They're still, they're trying to sample the buffet of Christianity in the city. What for? That means you're a vagabond. You're not part of any local work. You're not part of a, a house where you can call home. So you're just waiting to be screwed over before you leave there. Over here, we never even pay attention to you. No worry. If you notice, I don't really cater to any one person. It's like I love you all the same. Same, same. Like, if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, bye. Bye, Felicia. Anyway, goodbye. Go. You like go there. Go there full time. Don't come over here. Don't prostitute me out and tell me all, oh, Pastor, your message is so great. And then you moonlighting on someplace else. Go there. Just serve over there. We, we have a, a, a guy that comes to our church. He serves over here on Sundays. I know he's serving up there too. Because sometimes he forget to take off his name tag. Hello, Johnny Baboos. We all know what you're doing. Amen. All right. Good? I hope so. Be concerned with serving others and building the kingdom of God. Don't be so concerned with your, with your own interests. Your interests must die before you can serve God. He that loves his life will lose it, Jesus said, but he that loses his life will preserve it. That's John twelve twenty five. All right? You will gain more from Christ by becoming a servant. Let's go to 1 Corinthians nine nineteen, so you can see that one. The first one, that, you, knew, you know Jesus said that, right? All right, so 9.19, 1 Corinthians. For though I am free from all men, I've made myself a servant to all, Paul said, that I might win the more. How I many you know that he wasn't enslaved to anybody, but he still chose to serve them as a slave? It's free will, right? All right, let's go back to the notes here. You will gain more from Christ by becoming a servant. All right? Greatness in the kingdom is determined by servanthood. You guys know what servanthood is? It's not Robin Hood's brother. Let's look at Matthew 20, verse 26. Take from the rich and give to the poor. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Amen. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. All right? You get that? I hope you get that. Okay? Jesus was a servant. Philippians 2, 7. Let's take a look. All right? 2, 7. All right? Almost there. Uh, there you go. <laughs> All right. You can read from five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Same for you, boys and girls. He is not greater than I. This scripture is another one that proves it. All right? Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Why? Where are you seated? In heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. So you are in Christ Jesus. Jesus didn't consider it robbery to be equal with God. So neither should you. Amen. But made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So, I mean, you know that even though he was equal with God, he didn't consider it a crime, but he just chose to come under, go through the penalty, pay for it, and come out on the back end, saving all of mankind. Amen. All right, let's go back up in the notes a little bit more so we can read off the last one there. 
Jesus was a servant. He came to minister, not be ministered to. But there were examples of women who ministered to Jesus. Amen? All right, as long as you understand. A true servant will display the following characteristics. Number one, he makes himself available to God to serve. I mean, you got to be available. You guys see the last four letters in the word available? You don't have to be able. You just have to be available. What does that mean to you? Oh, I would come, but I be. Oh, I get stuff. You don't even consider it because you already come up with the predisposed excuse. Amen. Oh, I I cannot because I'm not talented enough. I know I'm, that's not my gift. What do you want, union worker? <laughs> not in my job description. How oh, you know that your job description as a Christian involves being available, not able. Hello. Okay, I hope you're getting this. He makes himself available to God to serve. He does what is needed even when it is inconvenient. If I say, hey, I need you on Saturday. Oh, but I get up. Roof, roof, roof. Anyway, why all the excuses, man? All right. He puts God above his schedule. What? He sees interruptions as divine appointments to cultivate a servant's heart. You guys get that? All right. He pays attention to needs. Another thing, his heart is revealed in the little acts he does or she does. Remember, you got to be that person when nobody's watching, you're still serving the Lord. Amen. This person views no task as beneath him or her, right? The blessing shows up when you serve God. Exodus, Exodus 23, verse 25. You can take a look at this and see. And hallelujah. All right? This is God speaking through a prophet, right? So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will... Bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that if you serve the Christ and other people and serve God, you'll never be sick a day in your life? For real? How many of you want that? You'll never know how healthy you are till you find out how sick you are. How many of you appreciate when you're healthy? When you can do this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Which one you rather have? Amen. All right, so you got to appreciate when you're healthy. Amen. All right, the blessing shows up when you serve God. You want to know the blessings? Well, you can look at Deuteronomy 28. It talks about in the verse uh, 1 through 14. It talks about the blessings from 15 to 64. It talks about the curses. And the curses today, although paid for and all of this, how many know that the curses are still there if you believe in them? The enemy will see to it that you walk in curses more than blessing. God rewards who? Thank you. Gosh. God rewards who? He, re he rewards servants, right? Because how many of you feel like you are serving the Lord? Is it a real sacrifice to show up for church? Not really. But how many know it's more of a sacrifice to ask, is there anything I can do for the church while I'm here? Or God talks to you and he, I want to do this for the church. You know what this church needs more than anything? People with trade skills or money. That's it. Why? Because money pays the bills of the people that don't have. You know, we can't. If nobody can do the trade, we got to hire somebody who can. Yeah, man. So you guys know it takes a lot of money to run a ministry. This ministry, all told, probably, honest to God, it costs us about eighteen to twenty-two thousand a month. The total sum. Uh, of the offerings that come in in a month are somewhere between 7 to 10. What? 
also how we run this church in the whole. That's why we have a preschool. Thank you to Tara for running the preschool for us because it helps us pay the church, the church's existence because the church costs way more than the preschool to run, even with payroll at the, at the preschool. This church costs money to run. There's nothing free about running a church. What are you thinking about it? How many, have you, how many churches have you seen that failed? It's because of a lack of money, because they have a lack of servants. Servants is another word for givers. Amen? So, thank God. Some of you, you're learning the power of tithing. You know, the greatest example of tithing is my sister. She come on Sundays, eh, honey? She goes, she was telling everybody, you got to go church, but not just go church, you got to tithe. Now, my sister, uh, to her credit, when she was young, she had learning disabilities. She did all of these things. But she knows what works and what doesn't work. All right? She came to this church. You guys remember she started about the beginning of the year. Came to the church. Within 30 days, she purchased her second house. And she didn't just purchase, purchase a house. She got a house that became a duplex. So now she has two rental incomes. Now she's looking at the third and fourth ones already. So that tells you something that somebody that maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe she's not the most intellectual. She relies on me for that. But she knows one thing. Whatever works, I'm going to do that. And it's been paying off for her. Why her? Only since January. Why not all of us in here? Some of you have been here for a while. You should expect things to roll over for you exponentially greater and greater. She's on her way. I don't need to worry about her. She was the one I would worry about the most. Now I'm like, she's more worried about me than me worried about her. Praise the Lord. And that's my own sibling. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay. She's the one that every time something goes on, she always texts me, Timmy, you here? <laughs> yes. She got all mad at me because I was in, I was off island. Like, where you stay? <laughs> Off island. Ha! Oh. She texts, ha! Oh. That's pure genius. I cannot even text, ha! Oh. But I knew exactly what she was saying. <laughs> Amen. So if she can do it, how many know that you can do it? And only since January. Some of you should expect, hey, move on to better things. Oh, I have a house. Rent them out. Buy another one. And another one. Just keep going, right? The more money you can funnel into the kingdom. You, you know that putting money in here is actually a bank account in heaven. When you need it, you can take a withdrawal from heaven. You can ask the Lord, Lord, I need a withdrawal from my heavenly bank account. Boom, it shows up. So a lot of people think they turn it into a black hole. No, you're not. You turn it into the universe. If you deserve it, the universe must serve it. That was from a movie I was watching. This Lolo's. I deserve it. The universe must serve it. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we should think the same way, right? Nah, if you're going to throw them all into alcohol, how you know that there's no return on investment? You're only going to get six cents. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> throw them into another glass pipe, what you get back. And then, pow, that's it. How long is that? Well, you ever gave away a present to a kid at their birthday party? I did this before. You give a kid a birthday present, and then they look at it and push it on the side. How many of you feel like, I'd like to come back right now? I would be this kind of creative, retarded kind of guy, mental, like, you know, I would do this for the kids. I would give them things that make the most noise. Remember my little cousin, yeah? he was like seven at the time. He used to talk like this when he was seven. Look, mommy, I get flippers. Seven. I'm like, this guy is off his rocker. So it was his birthday. I gave him a train whistle, you know, the hoo hoo, and a conductor's hat, and I gave him one drum set. I said, my, my present beat everybody's. Because he's blowing the train whistle and hitting a drum with the train hat on. And everybody else was like, I win because everything's a competition to me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Give a kid finger paints for their birthday. What do they like to do? Open them right there at the party. Yeah, finger paint everybody. You win. 
So you know that your gifts should be make you a winner every single time. Right? If you give to the Lord, I mean, you're supposed to be a winner like that. Not have to wait. Yeah, man. Well, I don't know about you, but you're going to do with this kind of message, whatever. You do whatever you like to do. Amen. Yeah, Hallelujah. So God rewards the servant. God will never forget your labor of love. Uh, Hebrews 6, verse 10. Hey, she fixing her hell. Call me. All right. Verse 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name and that you have what? Minister to who? The saints. And do minister. So he, all he's asking you to do is look out for us guys before you look out for other guys. Look around this room. You may not see the need, but God will tell you. Amen? Like, hey, something wrong with you? No. Not like that. God will show you, hey, maybe they need something. Maybe. You know, it's not hard to figure people out. You don't have to be prophetic to that degree. All you got to do is look and observe, and you start to see what is needed. Amen? Simple as that. All right. All right, a true servant will use whatever he or she has to serve God. Whatever God has given you, use it to serve others. First Peter 4, verse 10. God gave you that nice pots and pans. What are you doing with them? Not cooking for others. Okay, well. Verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it one to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You all have gifts. Amen. Um, there's only three anointings in the world, boys and girls, if you're writing notes tonight. Priest, prophet, and king. Priestly anointing services the church. Prophets are a sidearm to the church. Amen. If anybody calls you a prophet and they want to hang out with you and say, oh, I'm a prophet, run from them fast. Because a prophet in the Old Testament always had a living quarters behind the house because they, they don't play well with others. They were supposed to deliver God's message and move along. Amen? What you see is prophets, they come. I know of several prophets. They call themselves prophets. And then they come and they, they're moochers. They basically try and siphon and drain a church. And they come with no real message because they don't have a speaking gift. All they're supposed to do is prophesy and leave. But they want to be the center of attention. They want to do the message and the ministry. And they want to tell the pastor how to run the church. You know what I say to guys like that? Get the hell out of here. You're supposed to come, do your thing, and leave. Not hang out and overstay your welcome. Amen? That's why I operate in a prophetic, but if you notice, I don't call myself... A prophet. Why? Because you can't be a prophet and a pastor at the same time. There's people calling themselves pastor so-and-so, but I'm a prophet. You're schizophrenic. You don't even know what you're talking about. You cannot be both at the same time. Amen? And you come and there's one particular prophet in, uh, around making the rounds. Let me tell you something. All the notes that this person uses is all my old notes. Because I go to some of the meetings and I look, because this person, I'm not going to say man, male, female, whatever. This person has all of these things made in book form for sale. And I look at it and I go, oh, you're still using my notes. And they look at me, shut up, you shut your mouth. Because at one time I was really close to that person. And it kind of bums me out that you're not a teacher. You're not a pastor. Stop trying to teach and pastor. Just prophesy, not prophesy. You're living a life. You think you're going to pastor, right? Because if you're a prophet, you're supposed to hit and run, and you come and you stay, you're only going to end up affecting people the wrong way. Amen? I hope you understand. There's five office gifts, right? You can look them up in Ephesians 4, right? And it talks about apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist. That's it. Fivefold ministry. Some guys think they're all five. Yeah, they do. All right. If you're an apostle, you can do all of the gifts, but you delegate those gifts out. If you're a prophet, you prophesy, because prophets will point the way and get the hell out. Amen. Pastors and teachers, why? Because teachers and pastors are, you know, a pastor will come alongside the teaching gift and they'll be married to the church. Amen. And an evangelist, 
I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Well, an evangelist is always there to lead somebody into Christ. Amen. That's all it is. So what gifts do I operate in? I, I've been told that you're, you're apostolic. You're an apostle. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not releasing people into ministry. So I'm not really a true apostle yet. I, I build you guys. You guys are all released into ministry here in this city. How many of you f have been praying for people? Okay, like four of you. Praise the Lord. Well, funny because some people tell me that so and so pray for them, and you're sitting here, you never raise your hand. You like, anyway, must have been your evil twin. I don't know. All right. Well, I'll just pray for people. Amen. All right. Whatever God has given you, use it to serve others. And the last thing here, the anointing is for service to others. So you're here to service other people. Service means if you take your car in for service, where are you gonna take them to the landscaper? Well, where are you going to take your car? To the service station where they can service your car. Amen. Hello. Huh? Are you going to take uh, your car to the guy that pour concrete? Mm, okay. Hopefully. So what is your gift? The majority of the gifts in this church is the gift of mouth. So use your mouth. Amen. You've been using it. Use it another way. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, you guys all get mouth. Oh my. Okay, I'm